Hi, it's Dougie Wood, and in today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about what are SharePoint permissions. Now, think of SharePoint permissions as a set of different keys that give you different levels of access to a SharePoint site. So let's take a look at the different levels we can be given. Firstly, I've grouped the two different types of categories of access um, on the screen here as Microsoft 365 Admin Center roles and SharePoint site permissions. Um, I'll explain them both just to give you a bit of a, a, an example, but I'm going to really be focusing on the SharePoint site permissions in this particular video. So first off, starting at the very top of the kind of Christmas tree, you've got what we call the global admin. Now, the global admin is essentially the the, the the top tier access to Microsoft 365. The global admins have absolutely access to all areas of Microsoft 365. Every single SharePoint site, every single OneDrive, every single Microsoft team, every single Exchange um, Outlook mailbox, they have access to everything. So typically you only find there's a handful of those people in an organization that would have a global admin or often their service accounts which have that level of access. If you're from a very small or medium sized organization, um, it might be the original person who set up Microsoft 365 or someone from your IT team that has access to a global admin. Now, now, we wouldn't recommend giving you uh, global admin access to be able to do um, sort of SharePoint administration. It, it's complete overkill, not needed. The next level down from that is what we call SharePoint admin role. Now, as a global admin, you would automatically have the SharePoint admin role along with other admin roles assigned to you. But you can just have the SharePoint admin role. Now, if you needed to have access to every single SharePoint site um, throughout your Microsoft 365 environment, you would need to have the SharePoint admin role and that would automatically give you access to every single site. So those are the two, as I say, the, the very top level. So we're working kind of from the top down of, of access to everything inside of Microsoft 365 and access to every single SharePoint site. So underneath that, we then have SharePoint site permissions. So now we're talking at the actual SharePoint site level. So imagine we're now talking about, uh, for example, this might be our, uh, our human resources SharePoint site, for example. Now at this level, you have what we call the site collection admin. Now the site collection admin um, is typically only one or maybe two people who have access to the SharePoint site um, and they are responsible for the overall um, contents of the SharePoint site and giving people access um, to the SharePoint site. Now the site collection admin can do everything on the site. They can create new things, they can delete things, they can edit things, um, they can add people, they can remove people. Um, and there's no restrictions for that particular user on that one SharePoint site. The next layer down from that is then full control. Now, full control has a, uh, the same type of access in terms of they can create, they can delete, they can edit, they can add people to the SharePoint site. Um, the only difference between a full control user and a site collection admin um, in the grand scheme of things is that a full control user could potentially lock themselves out of something or lock others out of something like a document or a file or a folder or a page um, they could lock themselves out whereas a site collection administrator can never be locked out of anything on the site so let's say for example uh, I'm a site collection admin and my colleague Joe Bloggs has got full control. Let's say, for example, Joe Bloggs, he's created a folder inside of the SharePoint site um, called Joe Bloggs and he's restricted the folder permissions so only he can see that particular folder. But then Joe Bloggs leaves the organization. He gets a new job and he goes somewhere else. Now, all of his other teammates, even though they've got full control access, do not have access to the Joe Bloggs folder because he's left the organization. So in this scenario, what they would do is they would contact me as the site collection admin who can never be locked out of anything to come into here find the folder and then share the folder permissions with somebody else so that they can have access to that so that's the, really the main difference between the two Beneath that, we then have the edit access to the SharePoint site. Now, the main difference is that the, the edit users can edit things, they can create things, they can delete things. Um, the main difference is full control has more access to the permissions of sharing the site. 
We then have the read access, um, which is typically referred to as read only, which is exactly what it says on the tin. You can only read things on the site. So you can only open things up, download them, read them, but you cannot create anything new. You cannot delete anything and you cannot update anything. So typically, say, for example, on a human resources communication site, you would tend to find that there might be, say, one or two site collection admins who may be um, a, a, a sort of... Um, a content owner or a super user from human resources uh, and maybe one um, sort of representative from the IT department. You then might have a, a few more people who are full control users so are creating uh, news on the site and managing the permissions and things like that. A couple more editors who are kind of uploading documents and working with documents and then typically on an intranet site where everyone in the organization has access you would then give the everyone except external users uh, which is a default permission group read access which means everybody in the organization would have read access to the human resources site. So that's basically how the permissions work. So let's look at that in a real world setting. So going now into my SharePoint site, to get to the actual permissions of the SharePoint site, I need to click on the cog, and then I'm going to click on the site permissions. Now, this will show me the full control, what is known as the site owners, the site members, which is um, at the moment got limited control, but it would typically have edit control, uh, the site visitors, which has got no control, but typically would have read access. Now, to add somebody, um, in fact, actually, first off, I'm just going to quickly explain. If you want to add a site collection admin, we would first go to the uh, advanced permission settings. And then within here, you can see I can click on the site collection administrators. And this will then show me everybody who's a site collection admin. Now, these are separate to the security groups um, that we were seeing down here. So, for example, where we've got human resources members. Um, with edit access and owners with full control and read. These are three standard areas. If I just go back to uh, my PowerPoint really quickly, these three bottom ones grouped together here are essentially the, the groupings that we can get to just by clicking on the cog and going to site permissions. Whereas a site collection admin, you need to go into the advanced area to actually be able to see that particular permission. So let's go back now to the home page of our site and I'll show you how we can share permissions with people. So it's nice and simple to do. All we need to do is click on the cog across the top right hand corner, click on site permissions and then where we've got the uh, share site button, we click on that and then within this box we type in someone's name. So we type in for example Joe Blogs and then we can choose what level of access we want to give him. So we can either give him full control, edit or read. So that will then, depending on which one we choose, that will then drop them into that specific grouping. We can choose to send them an email and even type in a personalized message if we wanted to. And then once we're happy with that, we click on the add button and that will then add him into the site owners group, which gives him the full control access to our SharePoint site. Now, if I remove him, so click on this drop down and click on remove, that removes his access. So if he was to come to the SharePoint site now, he would get a message which says, sorry, you don't have access to this site. Please um, request access, for example. Now, um, you must have access to a SharePoint site to be able to access it. So if you ever see that message pop up, it's because you don't have access to that SharePoint site. I always think of it a bit like a VIP list at a nightclub. If your name's not on the list, then you're not coming in and you have to specify people. You can also specify security groups. You don't have to specify individual people's names. You could type in the name of a security group. So that could be an Azure AD group or you can create SharePoint uh, security groups. <coughs> you can also take advantage of um, default out-of-the-box SharePoint groups. So there's one that's called everyone except external users, which literally means everybody inside of the organization that has a valid SharePoint license with inside of your Microsoft 365 tenancy would have a uh, be inside this group automatically. So as I said before, if I wanted to give everyone in my organization access to human resources with read only, I don't have to type in everyone's name or I don't have to find loads of security groups. I can just use this one. Um, I might not want to send them an email though. And then I just click on add and I'll then automatically add them to my site visitors group. So everyone now inside of my organization would have access to this particular SharePoint site. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please subscribe to the channel, like, and if you've got any questions, then please use the comment box below. Thank you very much.